Welcome to Dr. O is in the studio. My name is Marilyn Abad Cardinali and I'm very pleased to co-host this segment on what is addiction. Dr. O, who is, um, teaches psychology here at Gavlin College, welcome to the studio. It's your forum to help us go and get the best of mental health yes. uh, advice that there is. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a little, uh, some visual aids here. I've uh -huh. got some, I uh, went and got some uh, technology, if you will, mm -hmm. that students carry around with them. And um, they gave them up to me so mm -hmm. they can have them for props because today we are talking about addiction to technology and mm -hmm. TV. You, you mean they gave it up because they, for many students, this is like an appendage, it's like an arm or a leg. They can't separate from it. You're absolutely right. You know, I walk down, uh, when students are walking down, um, say, Sycamore Lane here at Gavlin College, mm -hmm. you'll see many of them just kind of looking at their, uh, mm -hmm. their little phones, whatever. They all have screens and they all come in a variety of mm -hmm. great sizes and you can get all kinds of apps for mm -hmm. them. You play games, you, you have your Facebook, your whatever, right. right? A lot. Do um, you think students want to give that up? No. No. They no. can. It's a part of who they are. They're addicted. They're addicted. So let's start the show mm -hmm. by you telling us just exactly what is addiction. Okay. Addiction or dependence is an extreme need for a substance or activity for its desired effect, which results in a compulsion to use the substance or activity despite negative consequences and tolerance and withdrawal symptoms. Oh. Now, all addictions are chronic and progressive, which means that it goes on and on and gets worse and worse unless a student get help for it. I see. So does that mean that we're going to ask them to give up their uh, phones and addiction to technology? But it's not only phones. It's, mm -hmm. you know, going and sitting in front of a computer, mm -hmm. computer games, um, sitting in front of a screen all the mm -hmm. time can't be all that healthy, right? You're right. You're right. So uh, uh, are there different types of addiction then? Can you tell us about that? Well, before I get to that, let me share this with you. Okay. There are two sure signs that a student is addicted to a substance or activity. Number one is when the student experiences withdrawal. Oh. And withdrawal is a mild to severe physical and or psycho-emotional pain and cravings for a substance or activity when there is a delay or a reduction in the substance or activity. Someone who's addicted to technology or TV needs to have their regular fix of it. And if for some reason when it's time to have a fix of their technology or TV and it's delayed, they just can't get to it, they experience some psycho-emotional pain and an increased need to, I've got to get on my cell phone now, I must surf the internet now. And then a second sure sign that a student is addicted to technology is when she or he experiences tolerance. And tolerance is the need for greater and greater amounts of the substance or activity to achieve the desired feeling or to prevent withdrawal symptoms. Now usually tolerance occurs when a student depends more and more on that substance or activity for relief or escape from depression, from tension, from anxiety, from stress, from insecurities, from loneliness, from emptiness, from life's challenges or problems in general. And the more a student flees to their technology or TV for relief of these, the more they need more technology and TV to get relief and it becomes a cyclical thing. I see, mm -hmm. I see. So. Um, that's how we get addicted to these things then. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there, they, 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 they feel this need mm -hmm. to, um, to have, I guess, what is, what is the need? I mean, is it, is it feeling of acceptance or in the case of, say, 
people who sit, um, this has been my experience sometimes, is mm -hmm. that I get in front of something called Facebook, right? and you almost like to go, well, what's going on in the conversation there? What are people saying? You know, you need to know. It's just that we need to know. It's kind of uh -huh. like an overload of the information age, exactly. where too much information, you know? Too much, too much information. I must share that addiction is a time sucker, mm -hmm. academic obstructor, mind messer upper and health disruptor, especially substances. Addiction is also a relationship corruptor, especially if you're looking at pornography and TV. Addictions are also a financial abductor, especially the purchase of technology and uh, of video games and gambling, gambling and materialism. Oh, gambling, that's true, huh? Financial abductor. There you go. The kids are, are kids, not only students, I mm. think, People out there have figured out how to gamble online and you just, mm -hmm. you don't know, you're just kind of clicking away and then before you know it, you're millions in debt, mm -hmm. so to speak. It's easy to get, and maybe that's part of the addiction in terms of technology, it's pretty easy to access it because there's mm -hmm. an app for that, an app mm -hmm. for this, and it only costs 99 cents. But if that's you have right. 100 apps, uh -huh. that's $100 and then, oh my God. It can and go now on you're and on. on the technology addiction treadmill. Ah, right. You want more. And more, and more, and more. And you are never satisfied. That's the whole idea behind addiction. You're never satisfied, so you continue to be trapped in it. Wow. Never sat, never fulfilled. Never. Whatever that emptiness is, is mm -hmm. it an empty hole that people might feel in terms of, um, I don't know, it's, it's just like sometimes um, it's good to be connected because you know mm -hmm. what's going on, but if it's too much, because mm -hmm. what do you you stop doing your what's required in your everyday life? Is that the, what the happens? things that are most important get pushed to the back burner okay. for the addiction to the technology or the TV? Interesting, interesting. Okay, so then are there different types of addictions then? Yes, there are two types of addictions. They are called substance addictions okay. and activity addictions. And substance addictions are being hooked on or controlled by alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, methamphetamine, caffeinated beverages such as coffee and energy drinks, which are a very common addiction that many are ignoring. Uh, other types of substance addictions are addictions to sugar, addictions to food, another major addiction contributing to this obesity epidemic in this country because mm -hmm. so many are living to eat rather than eating to live. Mm -hmm. Other substance addictions are prescription and over-the-counter medicines and the list goes on and on. Yes. But then you have the activity addictions. The activity addictions are being hooked on or controlled by such things as Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, YouTube, TV, texting, emailing, iPods, video games, pornography, masturbation, sex, chat rooms, eBay, gambling, materialism. Materialism we know is an obsessional desire for more and more and better and better things. These are activity addictions. These are things that we don't ingest through our mouth orally or veins intravenously or through our nose nasally. We ingest them by looking at them by interacting with them and they're just as destructive as substances that we put in our body directly. Hmm. Now students addicted to substance or, or activities no longer reach for the substance or activity but the substance or activity grabs them. In other words the substance or activity controls you. You don't control it. And oftentimes the students have to get this point. This is so important. When students are addicted, mm -hmm. they're not addicted per se to the substance or to Facebook or MySpace or Twitter or YouTube or TV. They're not addicted to it literally. What they are addicted to are the feelings that the substance or activity creates, such as excitement or pleasure or some other desirable feeling, or they're addicted to the feelings that the substance or activity reduces, such as tension, stress, mm -hmm. or some other undesirable feeling. When I see a patient, whether it be a student or a non-student that's addicted to technology, I will ask him or her, how are you feeling when you engage in this activity? Mm -hmm. And they will say, more happy, less bored, 
less depressed. They are addicted to that technology or that substance because it helps lift them up out of a feeling state they don't want or it lifts them into a feeling state that they do want. In fact, I will ask this student or non-student, when you engage in this substance or activity, do you feel better or not so bad? Mm -hmm. And if they tell me they don't feel so bad, I get concerned as a psychologist because that means that whatever they're addicted to no longer helps them to feel good, mm -hmm. just helps them to feel not so bad. They don't get the high anymore. That means they are topping out in terms of that addiction really helping them to feel good. Wow, yeah, I can see. I mean, I guess as, as you're saying, um, describing all of these things, I can think of all the things that I'm addicted mm -hmm. to. Uh, we or, all can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, tell us about technology addiction and some of the problems that it causes for students. Okay, first of all, there is nothing wrong inherently with technology. Right, we need to make that clear. <laughs> it, nothing wrong with it. Technology be, can be used responsibly for the good of self and others, mm -hmm. or technology can be used irresponsibly for the not so good and detriment of self and others. And as I mentioned earlier, with any addiction, any substance or activity, you must control it. It must not control you. And for students addicted to technology, technology is number one, a time sucker. Mm -hmm. It's a time sucker because they spend inordinate amount of times surfing the internet mm -hmm. or inordinate amount of times on Facebook, on MySpace, on Twitter, or they spend too much time on their cell phones texting or talking or playing video games. Their addiction just consumes so much of their time mm -hmm. that they neglect more important things such as studying, mm -hmm. getting the rest they need, or exercising or socializing. And of course, when they neglect studying, it ends up being a academic obstructor. Mm -hmm. If they neglect sleep and exercise, it ends up being a health disruptor. And if they neglect socializing, it ends up being a relationship corruptor. That's one of the problems that it causes for students who are addicted to technology. A second cause or problem for students it can cause is students often use technology as an escape from things that need to get done such as that all-important thing for college and school called studying. Mm -hmm. And they end up putting things off and putting things off until they have this huge backlog of things to be done, which creates even more stress right. because they have even more to do and even less time to do it in, mm -hmm. which reminds me of our first program, Procrastination. Correct. A third uh, cause that technology can cause for students is technology especially cell phones, are daily interrupters, distractions, and concentration breakers because a student can be studying, a student can be having a conversation with someone, a student can be sleeping, or they can be engaged in some other important needed activity and the cell phone rings, beeps, chirps, or vibrates and because they had this incoming text message or phone call, which most students can ignore. And so they drop whatever they're doing to answer. It disrupts your daily routine. And then a fourth problem that technology can cause is the repeated interruptions from text messages, emails, and phone calls that take away from students being relaxed in the here and now because they're available 24 7 to anyone who has their phone number or their email address and most students I've observed this including non-students end up being anxious either in anticipating a call text message or email or they're anxious because they need to make a call text message or email it is it is a life disruptor nothing wrong with technology but when you're addicted to it you're constantly on alert to receive a call or you're constantly looking forward to make a call or a text message uh, let's go on to this next question then what about TV addiction and some of the problems it can cause for students I mean is it is it much of an addiction now because kids can just um, do they put down their cell phones and 
and then sit down in front of the TV as much as they used to? Well, you know, according to the research for students, they are quickly becoming more addicted to technology than TV, uh -huh. but you still have many students that are dual addicted to both. Dual addicted? Dual addicted. <laughs> okay. Dual addicted. Let us hear about what that means. <laughs> like with technology, TV isn't a bad thing, but you must control it. It must not control you. Students addicted to TV or TV with cable and satellite service, mm -hmm. number one, often neglect things that need to get done, such as that studying, getting good sleep, exercise, relationships. And many students have told me over the years, quote, I am addicted to TV and I waste a lot of time and it makes me lazy, but I still can't stop looking at it. Well, it only, not only that, it makes them sedentary, you're mm -hmm. right. right. Number two, many students feel that their lives are empty, boring, or unfulfilling, and they derive a thrill or some other desirable feeling by living through the lives of the actors and the actresses on TV or through the excitement or some other desirable feeling from the high stimulation of most TV programs. Most TV programs are geared to be emotionally stimulatory because they know that if they can grab you emotionally, they've got you. Mm -hmm. A third uh, problem that addiction to TV can cause is TV addiction is a mind messer-upper especially to the self-esteem because a glamorous picture is often painted of celebrities and their lifestyle, which tends to be materialistic, and students long for that lifestyle, but they can't achieve it, mm -hmm. and so they end up feeling even more frustrated and dissatisfied with themselves and their life. And then a fourth problem that TV addiction can cause is TV addiction can negatively affect a student's behavior in terms of anger control if they're watching violent TV programming. Oh, violence on television, absolutely, yeah. Been an issue ever since television has been on, you know. Mm -hmm. We're, are we creating a nation of young people that um, are just, you know, numb? They, they feel permission to act out their aggressive impulses. Right. And like you just mentioned, because they're exposed to so much violence, they become desensitized. Right. And the act of violence isn't abhorrent. It isn't something they just flee from. It's something that has become a part of their life in terms of what they view. And it can lead to someone having reduced impulse control, where when they get angry, they aggress against someone, as opposed to holding in, holding themselves in self-control. Right. Well, this whole numbing effect is very frightening to me, where people will, it's okay to watch someone being hurt because it's... It's entertainment. It, yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, isn't that funny? So let's sit and mm -hmm. watch people, just, you know, hurt another human being because mm -hmm. it's okay. I don't even know if that's connected to bullying. I don't know. Oh, that's yes. Oh, yes. I, when, when I see students as patients or non-students and they are addicted to, let's say, slasher movies, mm. and I'll say, when you look at a slasher movie, how do you feel? Excitement, and sometimes I think it's funny, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm disappointed because there's not enough blood and guts. Mm. Now, see, that's a problem. That's a <laughs> yes, problem. Yes, I think it's a problem, yes. Because the student or non-student is being enter entertained by murder. Yeah. Now, they will tell me things like, well, it's just a movie. But if you know it's just a movie, I will say to them, how come you were scared the first time you saw it? Because mm -hmm. your brain doesn't recognize it as a movie. It sees something horrible done to another person, which you are, and it naturally is scared of it and doesn't want to look. Mm -hmm. But the more you look at these violent movies, slasher movies, the more it becomes entertaining mm -hmm. and you actually can laugh at it. You can actually laugh at the slaughter of another human being. But let me cover this fifth yes, thing here yes, that yes. TV addiction can cause. TV addiction can be hazardous to students' physical health because TV addiction tends to breed inactiveness mm. and to lead to the ingestion of more calories, which of course results in weight gain. There you go. That's Strong it. correlation or association between TV viewing mm -hmm. and eating and weight gain. Absolutely.
I, <laughs> We've heard of couch potato, right? That's it, That's couch it. potato problems. Well, okay. Well, then that moves us then to um, how then, what advice, Dr. O, do you have for a student? How can we overcome this addiction to, first of all, you know, you recognize, we right. need to say, technology is mm -hmm. a good thing. Mm -hmm. But just like the Greeks say, nothing to excess. Right. So how can we overcome some of those? Number one, a student must deny their denial that they have a problem with technology or TV. The first, the first thing that must be done is deny your denial okay. that you have a problem with technology or TV. Students addicted to technology must be honest with themselves and admit their addiction consumes a lot of time mm -hmm. and interferes with other things that need to get done. That's number one. Number two, the student must commit to do whatever is necessary to break free of the addiction. They must, after acknowledging they have a problem, say to themselves, I will do whatever is necessary to break free. Number three, a student must ask him or herself this question. What am I thinking and feeling just prior to diving into my addiction? And 99% of the time, a student is thinking or feeling something negative or unpleasant and they're trying to escape that unpleasantness or create more desirable feelings through the addiction. Whatever negative feelings a student is going through that drives them to the addiction will pass if they wait. Mm. But many cannot wait. There is a low tolerance for any negative feelings and so there's a rush into the addiction to escape it. But if you wait a little while, that negative feeling will pass and you don't need to reach for the technology or TV for relief. A fourth thing to overcome addiction to technology and TV is a student must choose to do the right thing in the vulnerable moment. That is, instead of giving in to the addiction, read a challenging book, go for a walk, or this thing which is becoming rare, study. These are things that will do good and not harm like the addiction. Number five, a fifth strategy to overcome TV and technology addiction is a student must limit the amount of time spent with technology and TV. For example, if they have a weekly planner, which every student should have, they should schedule reduced time for using technology and TV in that weekly planner to every other day or only two hours a day, and then increase time in their schedule for more important activities such as that thing called studying, mm -hmm. exercise, getting needed rest, mm -hmm. socializing face to face rather than text to text, a sixth thing, which is very important, and many students really need to do this, unfortunately, is when a student can't limit their use of technology or TV, she or he may have to cancel their Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter accounts, or disconnect their internet service, or dump their TV. And then number seven, if none of these work, a student may have to get counseling ASAP. Dump the technology. Dump the technology. I know it's hard medicine to hear, but if you can't limit your use of it to appropriate lengths of time so that you don't neglect more important things, right. my recommendation has always been as a psychologist with anyone addicted to any activity mm -hmm. is you can't have a computer with internet access. If you can't control your use of it and it's getting in the way of your studying, going to work, and doing things more essential, then you have to get rid of it. I can't make them do it, right. but I can strongly encourage that you can't control it. It controls you. Therefore, you must get rid of it. And I can tell when someone's gonna get better when they say, I hear you, doc. I really don't wanna do it, but I know that I can't control it. I no longer am gonna have internet access in my household. That's a tough one, Dr. It's o. a tough one, but it's sometimes necessary in severe cases. In severe, severe, in severe cases. cases. Because it goes back to what you said about first you've got to deny the denial. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's people out there that are listening. It's not me, mm -hmm. you know. But it's you. It's you. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> okay, well, 
that's all really very, very interesting. And I think it's just, um, we just need to put some thought into our use. And again, when it becomes, I guess, a financial drain yes. on, on one's um, life, mm -hmm. when you are neglecting all of these, uh, your health, your studies, there's, it's time to take a look at what might be some of those causes. And I think mm -hmm. not beat ourselves up so much right. because of it, but um, to control it, to, to control. control it. You must control it, it must not control you. And what has resonated in our conversations is this idea about having a weekly planner. Right. Just going back to procrastination, even looking at relationships, looking at what you do with your life. Mm -hmm. Because if I know anything, life is very, very short. Mm -hmm. It's going to go by like a mm -hmm. flash and you're going to go, well, what have I done with it? Mm -hmm. And maybe your weekly planner, you'll go back and you say, well, you know what? I watched, um, I was on the phone for 90% of my life. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have that, I'm sure. But do you have any final thoughts about overcoming addiction to technology and TV? Yes, I do. If you're a student and you know you're addicted to technology or TV, or anything for that matter, get help now, because your addiction will only get worse until it drags you down, drags your life down, and drags down those who care about you, because they are affected by your addiction. Well, they're ignored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're neglected. They're neglected they're and They're low ignored. priority. That's right. Well, I think um, I thank you for all of your thoughts, and mm -hmm. I hope that our audience um, can uh, take to heart some of the advice that you've so. given to us today. I would like to thank our audience for watching, and I also would like to thank the students that are here mm -hmm. taping us for this television program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll let you watch us, okay, guys? Um, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, the Theater uh, 17 TV and Video Workshop class mm -hmm. for taping our show today and um, this is Marilyn Abad Cardinelli wishing you the best in mental health. Thank you Dr. Rowe. You're